So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to determine the overall trend of the market using Bloodhound. Now, there are a few common ways that traders use to look at the direction of the trend. And in general, you want to be trading with the trend, not against it. So if the trend is positive, that is bullish, you want to be trading mostly longs. And if the trend is bearish, you generally want to be trading short positions. So there are, again, a variety of methods that traders use. And some of them include checking the slope of a moving average. Uh, for example, maybe 100 EMA or 55 EMA. And in this example, we're actually going to be using a 55 EMA. Um, some other methods include seeing if the closing price is above or below a particular moving average. And also maybe checking the slope of the regression channel. In this tutorial example, we're going to be doing the first one, which is checking the slope of a moving average. So on my screen, you see a 150 tick chart of the crude oil. And I'm just going to start by adding Bloodhound to it. And I'm going to leave the template unnamed just so that we can start. And as you can see, Bloodhound is now just has is now on the chart and has some default values. I'm going to click the, the button at, up top above the chart to bring up the Bloodhound interface. And then we again we are just looking at the slope of the 55 EMA, which is this white line I've got on this chart. So we're looking at indicator slope. I add it, and then I simply change the indicator to the EMA 55. Hit OK, and Bloodhound instantly updates the chart. And as you can see, at any time where the EMA 55 is sloping upwards like it is doing here, we get green bars. And any time that the EMA 55 is sloping downwards, we get red bars. Now suppose we want to just ignore these areas where the EMA 55 is relatively flat. And as a trader, you probably know that flat zones tend to be a little dangerous. So to do this, we simply just raise the minimum slope value and the maximum slope value. So I'm just going to add some numbers here. And just remember, in a moving average, these numbers are typically quite small and usually fractions of ticks. But as you can see, as soon as I just increase these numbers a little bit, I start to get no painting in those zones where the EMA is relatively flat. So by increasing that number, you are decreasing the sensitivity, so to speak, of the slope analyzer. And so the higher the number, the more the indicator has to be sloping before you get a signal. So this is a very useful way to use Bloodhound as a trend filter. And you can most certainly put this on a different time frame. So right now we have it on the default time frame. And in just a moment, I will show you what it looks like putting it on a greater time frame. As I mentioned before, traders often like to analyze trend on a higher time frame. So as you can see on my screen, I now have two charts. And on the left hand side, I've got a 300 tick, which is the higher time frame. And I've added the 55 EMA to it, which is the line in orange. So what if we want to bring in the information from this 55 EMA onto our main chart or trading chart, which is the on the right hand side, the 150 tick? Well, first of all, we got to add the time frame. So we got to go into what we get we call again setup mode. So we go control I to bring up the NinjaTrader control panel for adding indicators. Select SI Bloodhound, go to the template and click the ellipsis button in the top right corner, add a chart, and let's add the 300 tick. And then take this original slope solver that we had defined earlier and just simply hit the down button. So now the indicator slope solver which has the 55 EMA 
attached to it, it is now going to be looking at the 300 tick time frame. And as soon as I hit OK, as soon as I move the, the cursor, I've got the global cursor up now, and you can see that as I brush back and forth between this red zone, we're looking at a negative slope on the left hand chart and as soon as I put my mouse over the green zone here we're looking at a positive slope on the left hand side so this is again taking the trend data from the EMA 55 that's sitting on the 300 tick time frame and transposing that information onto your trading chart so that's it for this tutorial. So join us on the next tutorial where we look at the second method for looking for a trend, which is checking the price against a moving average.